Welcome to the video tutorial for the 9 to 5 lunch bag pattern with Sosafira. This is a stylish insulated messenger style bag, ideal for a packed lunch, small picnic, baby food in bottles or snacks for a day trip. It has a pocket in the front, a pocket in the back and a sleeve inside for a cup or bottle. start off, take your exterior pieces and their corresponding insulated fleece and you'll attach the two together. Clip in place, making sure that the fabric is nice and smooth. Then you'll take this over to your machine and baste in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Repeat this step with all the exterior pieces aside from the front and back pockets. So now I'm basting the exterior pieces to their corresponding insulated fleece. Make sure you go slow at this step to ensure that the fabric doesn't pucker. And use a Teflon coated presser foot or a zigzag stitch if you find it difficult. So now moving on to the webbing pieces, dab a line of anti-fray glue onto the short ends of all the webbing pieces, that's the shoulder strap or handle, the flap straps and the side webbing straps. This is to prevent them from wear and tear over time and to make sure they don't fray. So preparing the flap connectors, take the longer webbing piece and thread it through a D-ring. Hold it in place with a couple of clips and then you need to mark one inch in from the end. Repeat this with the swivel snap hook and the slightly shorter piece of webbing, the 5.5 inch piece of webbing, put it in place. And again, make a mark one inch from the shorter end. You now take this over to your sewing machine and stitch as close as you can to the metal hardware, making sure you back stitch. And then you repeat with another line of stitching on the inch, one inch mark that you made. So take your exterior flap piece with the insulated wadding attached and find the bottom center. That the bottom of the flap is the curved edge. Mark the center with a little pencil, then take your strap connector with the swivel snap hook attached and line up the one inch mark on the webbing to the raw edge of the flap. Clip it in place so the hook will be pointing towards the center of the flap. Make sure it's nice and centered and then you can baste it in place within the seam allowance. Now take your flap lining piece and place it right sides together with the exterior flap, making sure that the strap connector with the swivel snap hook is sandwiched in between the two layers. Hold the layers together with clips and then you're going to stitch at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance along the sides 
and bottom edge only. Trim the bottom curved edges and the top angled edges to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just to make sure that when you turn it right sides out, you'll have a smoother finish on the flat edge. Make sure that you don't cut into the stitching when you're trimming down the seam allowances. Now turn the flap right sides out, making sure that all the curves and angled edges are pushed out with your finger. You need to ease out all the seams and then you finger press them as flat as you can, smoothing down all the edges. Then you can use some clips to hold the seams flat before you top stitch all the way around the flap. set your machine to its longest stitch length and you can top stitch all the way around the flap. I'm actually switching to a Teflon coated presser fit for this part. I find it easier to top stitch um, with the Teflon presser foot as it doesn't grip so much on the waterproof fabric. And you really need to take your time with this step, setting your machine to its a longer stitch and just going slow, slowly around the angled edges and the bottom curved edges to make sure it's as neat as possible. Find the center of the back pocket piece and the flap piece and place them right sides together so your flap lining side is showing first up. 
you will then pin the, along the top edge and baste in place at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now take your lining back slip pocket piece and place it right sides together on top of the flap lining. The flap will now be sandwiched in between the back pocket and the lining back pocket pieces. Pin along the top edge again and stitch along the top edge this time with a half an inch seam allowance. Flip the back pocket pieces wrong sides together and away from the flap. Use a few clips to hold the back pocket and lining pocket pieces in place and prevent shifting and then you'll top stitch along that top edge only and then continue to baste all the way around. So with the finished flap and back pocket piece right side up, pin the back pocket onto the right side of a main body piece with fleece attached. Clip in place, making sure that the sides and bottom edges are matching. Take this over to your sewing machine and baste the sides and bottom edges only within the seam allowance. Check out that neat deep pocket under your flap. Now pin the main front pocket piece and the lining front pocket pieces right sides together, pinning along the top edge. You will then stitch this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now trim a tiny V within the stitched line at the angular corners as shown, being careful not to cut into your stitching. Now flip the front pocket pieces wrong sides together and finger press the top seam and use clips to hold it as flat as possible and then you'll top stitch only along the top edge of the pocket. Now fold the front pocket piece in half to find the centre and the bottom edge. Place the strap tab with the D-wing attached over the centre mark that you've just made, lining up the one inch line of stitching on the webbing with the bottom raw edge. You will now baste this in place. Using your front pocket pattern piece, Transfer the pleat marks from the paper pattern to the front pocket, just on the bottom edge. Pin the side edges of the front pocket to the right side of a front main piece with the fleece behind. The front pocket will bow up in the middle. Then make a slight, slight pleat by bringing the innermost mark to the outer mark 
and pin in place. You repeat this on both bottom edges of the front pocket. Then add a few more clips to the bottom edge to secure and you will now baste the front pocket to the main front piece. Measure and mark three inches down from the end of a 12 inch webbing piece. I've already attached some double sided sticky tape to the underside of the webbing as well. Now loop the end of the webbing through a rectangular ring and fold over the ring up to this mark. Hold the folded end in place with clips. Repeat with the other side webbing piece. Now you're going to attach the side webbing strap to a side piece. So finding the center of the side piece with the fleece attached. Remove the other side of the double sided tape and position the webbing over the center crease that you've just made, making sure that it extends by about an inch at the bottom. Top stitch a rectangle around the whole strap tab getting as close as possible to the rectangular ring and back stitching along the top just under the ring to secure in place. You'll repeat this step with the other side strap piece and main side piece. Take your two bottle sleeve pieces and place them right sides together. Then you're going to pin along just the two longer edges and stitch along these two long edges only. Now turn the bottle sleeve right sides out. Easing out the seams and use a chopstick or a knitting needle to press those seams out. Then you can clip them in place to keep them as flat as possible. Then you top stitch both the top and bottom edges at a half an inch seam allowance in order to create two casings for your elastic. your 14 inch piece of elastic in half. Then using a safety pin, thread one piece of elastic through the top casing, leaving about a half an inch or so of the elastic out at the end where you threaded it, and baste this in place to secure. Pull the elastic out of the other end by about a half an inch and baste this end in place as well to secure, being careful not to stitch over the safety pin. 
Repeat this step with the bottom casing and the remaining elastic. Now you'll take your lining side piece and you're going to pin your finished bottle sleeve two and a half inches up from the bottom short edge on the right side. Now baste the two edges together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance on both sides. We can now assemble the lining pieces. So on the wrong side of the lining bottom panel, mark a half an inch in from each corner and then draw a rectangle to join the four marks. Take one lining body piece and pin the lining bottom panel right sides together along the bottom edge. You're then going to stitch from the first half inch mark that you made to the second half inch mark, back stitching well at both edges. Repeat this step with the other long edge of the lining bottom panel and the other lining body piece. You will now stitch the lining side pieces to the lining bottom panel in the same way as you did with the main pieces. It's easier to do this with the bottom panel facing up making sure you don't catch the seams from the main pieces in the stitching. With all the pieces now stitched to the bottom panel, you'll see that you have a, a neat rectangle where you have joined up the four corner marks. On the wrong side of the lining side piece without the bottle sleeve, mark 2.5 inches down from the long side just after the angled edge and then make another mark 5 inches from that first mark. Now pin the lining side pieces to the lining body pieces along all four sides starting from the top edge and working your way down to the bottom panel. You might find it easier to make a tiny notch two and a half inches down on either side of the lining body pieces just so that you can ease the sides together. If your lining side piece is a fraction longer at the bottom edge, that's okay because it will be hidden in the bottom seam allowance anyway. Starting with the side piece where you made the two marks, stitch from the top with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance until you reach the first mark that you made. When you reach the first mark, back stitch to secure, cut your threads and then resume stitching from the second mark further down. Continue stitching until you reach the bottom panel stitch line and then back stitch. You will now have a gap in this side piece for turning out the bag in the final assembly stages.
stitch the other lining side pieces to the lining body pieces. I prefer to do this working from the bottom at a half an inch seam allowance and then decreasing to a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance when you reach that angled edge. I just find it easier to follow the stitch line from the bottom panel. You could also start stitching from the top edge and work your way down. So long as you remember to increase your seam allowance to a half an inch after that angled edge and towards the bottom panel. Now trim the seam allowance along the side edges and bottom to about a quarter of an inch except at the side gap and around the elastic from the bottle sleeve. Mark and draw a rectangle on the wrong side of the main bottom panel, but this time 3 8 of an inch is in from each corner and join the marks to form a rectangle. Attach the bottom panel to the main body pieces along the bottom edges, as you did with the lining in step 25. You will now sew this at, but at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance making sure that you backstitch over the front pocket webbing to secure. Remember that you start and stop stitching at the 3 8 of an inch marks that you made, making sure that you backstitch at the start and stop. You will then attach the bottom short edges of the main side pieces to the shorter edges of the main bottom panel in the same way as you did with the lining, but using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Continue to attach the main sides to the main body pieces, just as you did with the lining, but using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance throughout. And there's no need to leave a gap in, in the side of the exterior. Just as before, I prefer to start from the bottom and work my way up to the top edge just so that I can follow that stitch line on the bottom panel. Take your time with this step as your machine is dealing with a lot more bulk and you also want to follow those angled lines along the side edges as neatly as possible to create a tapered side. So with the exterior right sides out, place it inside the lining so that they are right sides together. Make sure that the bottle sleeve is on your preferred side. Line up the top side seams of the exterior and the lining and use clips to hold in place. Finger press those top side seams open and pin in place. If your sewing machine has a free arm, remove it at this point. Then you'll stitch all around the top edges at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Trim the fleece within the top seam allowance, making sure that you don't cut into the stitching. Then gently pull the exterior out through the side gap in the lining. Now we need to close that gap that you left in the lining. Fold under both edges by about 3 8 of an inch and pin in place. Stitch close to the gap to close it, making sure that you backstitch at the start and finish. Push the lining back into the main bag and finger press all around the top edge using clips to hold the seam as flat as possible, making sure that the flap is out of the way for the final top stitch. 
with your machine set to a longer stitch length and starting from the back with the flap pushed out of the way. Top stitch all around the top edge of the bag, making sure that you back stitch at the start and the stop. You might want to use a Teflon coated foot or a walking foot for the final top stitch, depending on your machine. Loop one end of the shoulder strap webbing up and over the slider bar and pull through by about one and a half inches. Fold the webbing under by a half an inch and then fold it again by an inch. Pin the folded edge to the underside of the buckle as shown and stitch in place. If you'd like you can add a parallel line of stitching underneath the first stitches to secure the folded edge. This is now the wrong side of your shoulder strap. With the wrong side of the strap facing up, take the free end of your webbing and loop it through the side rectangular ring on the bag. Then loop it back over the slider bar making sure that the strap is not twisted. Pull the strap through the slider and then through the other side rectangular ring by about one and a half inches. Again making sure the strap is not twisted. Now fold the free end under by about a half an inch and then fold it again by an inch. Pin and stitch the webbing to the underside of the strap.